Hey there, so this today I'm going to focus on this topic of cinematic stingers because I've been trying to design my own. I made some discoveries that I wanted to share. I couldn't really find a lot of great information on this. There's, uh, a, a, I guess, a limitation on publicly available tutorials on sound design. Um, I would have found some of those really useful, but I did make a connection with a piece of software that I already had called Backbone. And there's, um, for those of you who maybe aren't familiar, I'll give you kind of like a very quick summary of what a stinger is. A stinger is going to be a sound effect. It's got some tonal elements, some noise elements. You know, it's, you know, a few seconds long, something like that. And it's, it's something that you might find in a trailer or in a music cue uh, that would um, be kind of like an impact or a moment. It's an accent. Uh, or maybe even a transition. It's it's sort of like a sound effect, except it's not creating the sound of something on the on the scene. It's creating some. It's a sound effect that generates an emotion. Um, so typically, these are are used in like spookier, kind of darker contexts. And there's a few things about these sounds that are, are really challenging to do. Maybe if you're just trying to manipulate one in a traditional DAW, or um, if you are trying to make one in like a sampler and that is uh, you, you want to have lots of layers now there's lots of tools for layering especially if you make like drum uh, your own drum sounds layering kick sounds stuff like that doing that in Ableton is pretty easy but making these sounds evolve is another aspect and that's not so easy uh, you could layer out different tracks or different clips in your DAW and then you know manipulate their timing and stuff so that the sound evolves. Maybe use automation curves, but that's all kind of kind of a headache. And ultimately, this is just like a sound effect, right? So it could take you hours in that context to put something together. You manipulate it, and then you got to like save the file, and uh, so you can come back to it if you need to change it. It's very hard to change its length in real time while you're composing. It just becomes like a wave file. So you want it to be layered, you want it to evolve, um, and you want it to make be easy to make. That's where Backbone really shines, is that you can, you can do that all. And then it's actually a playable instrument where you can change how long these things take. You can play in MIDI notes that actually um, trigger, trigger these sounds, and you can manipulate aspects of the sound you know, through MIDI control or automation, that sort of thing. Um, Another aspect which I found really useful, and I'm going to go into this, explain how it works in, um, in, in the app, uh, in Backbone, but is being able to separate out tonal from noise components. So um, in Backbone, they call this decomposing. There are more software products allowing you to do this. I know you can do this in some of the Isotope products. You can separate out noise uh, from the tone. So in a kick drum sample, for example, there'll be a tonal element and there'll be a noise element. And it's not until recently that separating these out digitally was really uh, kind of very easy to do. Um, now there's one other thing which um, kind of feeds into the ev evolving sound creation, and that is having different events happen on note on and different events happening on note off. And um, maybe having things that if you hold down a note, you know, some kind of sound generates or maybe a, a gated sound speeds up. You get like sort of, you know, the 8th to 16th to 32nd kind of machine gun on an LFO or gating or something like that. You want to have some playability there. Um, velocity control, how hard you hit, you know, how bright is the sound, what's the uh, filter envelope like on the sound, depending on the velocity of the notes. All of those aspects, uh, when you combine it with separating out the note on trigger and the note off trigger, uh, you can use really, really interesting sounds. And I'll, and I'll show you kind of how that would work as well in Backbone. So Backbone gives us tools mainly for sound design. It's marketed quite heavily, I think, as, as a drum design tool, and it certainly is that. If you're just looking to design your own drum sounds, it's awesome at that. But thankfully, because I was looking for something that would do this, 
it's awesome for this kind of sound design. So you could use it for risers, um, kind of whooshes, downlifters, stingers is what I'm going to show you today. Um, all right, so I'm going to jump right into it. Let me bring this up for you. And um, I'm going to take myself off the screen. And whoop, there I am again. Okay, so behind me, you got Backbone. I'll take myself off in a sec. I've got Backbone up here. This is a VST plugin. It's made by Steinberg. So you don't have to uh, have Cubase to run this. You can buy this and use it in Logic or Ableton. It's a VST plugin, so it's, it's fairly compatible. Um, it does not run in standalone, as far as I know. It has to be loaded into some kind of host. Um, and it is really thinking, I, I, I now realize it's a full-on design tool. And uh, I'm going to show you how we can do all these things, the layering and the different note-on, note-off triggers, the evolving sounds and all that stuff with a backbone. So let me take myself off the screen here and look at it a little more in depth. So what we see here, um, I'm going to start with this sound, which is just built out of the library. It's called Stinger 001. Not really the greatest name in the world. And let's hear what it sounds like. Okay, so what you can hear is at the beginning, there's kind of a, a booming sound, right? So I'm going to mute these different layers. Now over here on the left, just as I go, these are layers, right? So if you're, whether you're layering a stinger like I am here, or you're layering kick drums, you can just layer in um, your samples over here. Each one of these you can manipulate individually. And this can seem like a headache, but actually with a handful of tools, you can get awesome results really, really fast. But we've got this boom layer. And if I, if I uh, sorry, just solo that, I, I guess I don't have to mute everything. I'll just solo the boom and play that. we get this, uh, you know, this, this kind of pow sound. And let's look at the sample for that, and we can see the, the waveform. So we get uh, uh, just this booming sound. And then we've got some other layers here. Let's look at the tonal layer here. So that's this kind of like screeching glassy sound, right? I'm going to just zoom out there so we can see the whole thing. So this is like a really, this is really characteristic of a stinger. It's like atonal, um, but it has sort of, it has a quality which elicits an emotion, right? So you got that. Then we've got this layer here. So this is like a bell or maybe a ride symbol or something. There's also detectable re repetitions there, and that's coming from the effects down here. There's actually a delay on this. So if we take that delay off, then you just get the one transient. With the delay on, you get three. So it's just an effect, and this is it's not just that we can manipulate each one of these individual layers, but we can also apply effects to them down here, and you can even kind of reorder your effects chains. Um, the, the effects processing is, I can't imagine that you would not be able to route or create the effects that you want in here. It's extremely robust, uh, even if you don't use it. So let's look at a couple things here that... Um, regard my four kind of requirements when it comes to me and my process for developing a stinger. So first is layering. We got that over here, right? We can layer as many things in here as we want. And in Backbone up here in the navigation, you can actually go to layers and you can get at the individual layers. So if I wanted to bring in a clap sound, for example, I could just drop that in there. And now we've got a clap in there. So you can layer whatever you want in there. Now, evolving and sort of time-based controls. What's that all about? Well, evolving is, I'll give you a couple of examples. Let's take this boom sound here. One thing I can do here is inside their resynthesis engine, it's called resynthesis, I can actually kind of do a granular effect here where I can slow down the speed of playback. 
so it takes longer. And I can actually actually turn down this acceleration. What this is going to do is as the cursor moves, as the cursor position moves through my sample, which is a very granular approach, it's going to actually slow down, and you'll see that. So it just keeps going slower and slower and slower. So I get kind of an elongated sound, right? And you can actually sync this to your um, to to the timing of your music. So this will pull a BPM from the host, and it will submit some of some not all of these effects uh, or settings can be. Um, um, synced to whatever your host tempo is. So that gives you the ability to create longer evolving sounds, um, but also that they can be time-based in many cases if you wanted things to hit right on beats with whatever the tempo is coming from the master. Um, separating note on and note off, you know, this is really amazing. So let's say we've got this boom sound uh, or, uh, well, yeah, we'll go with the boom because this would be more practical. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use this note on delay, and I'm just going to push it up to, what you know, around a half a second. So when I hit the note, I actually, there's a half second delay in there. So you can hear the other layers before that plays. You know, let me do it with the clap because the clap will be even more audible. Now you'll hear everything. And then you hear the clap, right? So we're getting the uh, the top, we're getting the tonal, and then the boom has a half uh, second delay, and this clap noise has like over a second delay. So we get the first two layers, then we get the boom, then we get the clap. And so we can create um, these delays, but we can also decide that we only want the clap to happen on the note off whenever that is. So now, when I hold a note, that sound is going to hold. I'm still holding my key, but when I let go of my key, you're going to hear a clap. So, what you happens, there it goes. Now, well, the reason it took a little second there was because I had the delay on, right? If I turn the delay off, then it's going to happen the minute I take my finger off. So it makes it a very playable instrument where you can kind of have a different um, a different attack and then this control over the release. And um, let me uh, get myself on the screen here because I wanted to talk about this. If any of you out there have used a product called Rise and Hit, it's not the only one. There's a number of products out there like it. But it gives you um, a tempo-synced way to create like some kind of whooshing uh, riser sound into some kind of impact. So you get this like, you get really gr uh, specific control over where those two things meet. So you get this, you know, and you get the tail after that. Well, this is basically giving you that ability where when I let go of the note, you get the clap sound or you get whatever layer is there. So you can design your note on separate from your note off and then you can manipulate when this is played. And this is one of the reasons why it's so much better. Backbone is so much better than trying to create this in a sampler or um, a uh, in your DAW, right? Like messing around with different tracks because then you spit out like an audio clip and it just is one thing. I mean, you can cut it and you can move it around, but with this, it becomes playable. There I got all my note on triggers. There I've got my note off triggers and they can be really easily manipulated. So let's talk a little bit more about some of the things you can do in here. There's also this aspect of decomposing a sound. So let's take uh, this tonal sound right here. I'm gonna solo it and listen to it. It's this kind of like screeching sound, right? And I am going to go into um, this decompose option right here up at the top. I want to make sure decompose. Drum GAN is for generating drum sounds. It's a great tool, absolutely cool. I'm just not talking about it today. So you want to make sure you're on decompose, and you can set all these settings up at the top, and then ultimately you're going to hit apply. And when I hit apply, you'll notice over here in the layers 
that it's going to create a tonal and a noise version. So let's go ahead and check that out. So it's thinking, okay, now we've got tonal tonal and tonal noise because the original sample was just called tonal. So if, again, I'm just listening to the tonal, it's slightly different now because it doesn't have any of the noise in it. If I solo the noise, again, I get something totally different. So now I have these two layers. If I were to take the boom and I were to do the same thing, uh, the decompose options aren't available on this. But on the tonal here, I got two distinct layers that now I can manipulate, you know, like maybe have this tonal one start uh, on note on and have this one, you know, delayed a little bit so that it's going to have, let me unmute it there. So I get, <laughs> there's my clap at the end, it's so great. So I feel like if you are um, using in the resynthesis, using this uh, speed and accelerator controls right here, these are really cool. Position is also cool. This is kind of like basically where, um, where it's, it's almost like position in a granular synth where you're trying to um, use the harmonics and the frequency response from a specific part of the sample. But really, I, I get a lot of bang for my buck out of this speed uh, slider here and the acceleration. You can control how much velocity or key follow in, in impacts this speed variable as well. Um, and then using the delay, note delay, and separating out your note on from note off. There's, there's a million other features in this, so um, I am you know, not not really <laughs> going to be able to go through it all. Um, and that's not my intention. I made these discoveries recently myself. I had Backbone sitting on my hard drive. And uh, you can get it from Steinberg. I got it as part of their Absolute package. Um, they had a, a pretty good deal on the Absolute package last, uh, probably last Black Friday. I decided to uh, jump off and get it. I've used the drum GAN feature in Backbone to create drums for EDM and stuff like that, and it's been very effective. But using it for this, not only is it effective, but I really haven't encountered any other tools uh, that are kind of part of the mainstream toolkit that is this well equipped to creating a stinger or a transition. Um, I didn't even get into the envelopes for pitch envelope, um, filter envelope, amp envelope. Using those three would be a piece of cake to create a riser. Maybe I'll discuss that in a future stream. If you like this, please like and subscribe. It really helps me elevate the videos. Um, and I'm going to keep trying to do these kinds of quick tutorials. I'm trying to be concise and helpful, help people who are doing the work that I'm doing. I'd love to hear questions from you. Please try to reach out, get in touch. Uh, I want to build a community, and I want to be able to communicate what I'm learning and keep motivated to, to stay on top of these new tools. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.